Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Nancy Chrisman. <laughs> I, I already caught her off guard the first service. <laughs> No, the first two words in my sermon. Nancy Christman. <laughs> Nancy and I keep reminding you that we are in the travel portion, the very long traveling portion in Luke's gospel where Jesus is journeying to Jerusalem. And there are a lot of stories and parables and miracles along the way. And today's story is particularly telling about this journey because Jesus doesn't go around Samaria. He goes through it. And a good Jew might go around Samaria. So it's a detail to call out and it speaks to the whole purpose of Jesus' journey. Actually, we got to pay attention to this. A journey to the cross in Jerusalem. A journey where Jesus will do for humanity what he does for the lepers. To take those who have been cut off. To, whether it's, it's by sin, cut off from God, marginalized by others through prejudice, or through leprosy, and restore everything, making everything whole again with God. And so Jesus doesn't go around Samaria because he goes through it through it. They're part of the wholeness he's going to bring. And in Luke, there's a lot of healing and wholeness going on. So I needed to look up some Greek words in this, this story um, because I knew there were different words that Luke uses. And so in verse 15, where um, the ten are heading off to the priests and they recognize oh, they're healed. That's a word, a Greek word that is, describes physical healing. This story, though, concludes with a different word, the final verse, where Jesus tells the Samaritan, your faith has made you whole, has made you well, whole. The word is sozo, sozo in Greek, and it means saved. It, it's more than healing. It means wholeness. See, God's son was doing so much more than making a, a house call for leprosy. Jesus healed a Samaritan alongside the other nine, who we presume were children of Israel, Israel, who were Jewish, the other nine. The other nine who headed back, like Jesus told them, to go show themselves to the priest. That was, you know, um, the practice. When you look up Leviticus 13, chapter 13, when you had skin diseases, you had to be examined before you could go back home. See, so taken together, this little group is actually a microcosm of Jesus making things whole again. Not just healing, but making things whole. People of God, God is doing so much more. Praise Him with a loud voice. Turn. Turn to him and give thanks. <clears throat> He's doing so much more, but in, in blindness of faith, we can't recognize it, we can't see it. God is saving you. Okay, so this story is, so, is much more than about remembering to say thank you, right? But gratitude is an essential part of faith, isn't it? An early lesson we, we learned in life. I bought my granddaughter Charlotte this new new published book, The Thank You Book. Turns out Mo Willems, I didn't know who wrote it, but I always look it up. He uh, got his start on Sesame Street as a writer and animator. And so I just wanted to share a little bit about this funny story. Um, it begins, uh, you can just see uh, the characters are Elephant and Pig, right? They're best friends. And um, so it starts out with Pig kind of thoughtfully looking out and saying, oh, I'm really a lucky pig. I have so many things to be thankful for. I 
we're going to get started thanking everybody. And uh, Pig's friend Elephant is a little bit dubious about this task, thanking everybody. And he, he throws in there a couple times um, as Pig tries to thank everybody he knows. Um, you're going to forget someone. You're going to forget someone, Pig. <laughs> Like I say, Pig is very funny. He's running around thinking everybody he meets, everybody he knows. And then he says, you know, I forgot somebody. I know I forgot somebody. And he looks at Elephant and he goes, I forgot to thank you, my best friend. And Elephant says, no, you forgot somebody else. Here's a little plot twist, okay? You forgot to thank someone else. You forgot to thank our readers. Now all of a sudden, we're in. Right? It's such a delightful little thing. You can get a card here. Thank you, reader. Isn't that fun? Thank you, reader. Look how all of a sudden even we got included. Isn't that marvelous? And I love Pig and his exhaustive effort trying to recognize and give thanks. And in the process, opening his eyes more, it's a good faith practice. It's good to learn to give thanks. We all remember, you know, um, both as children and then maybe as parents too, um, um, directing our children to write thank you notes for the birthday gifts. And you know how that goes, dear blank, thank you for blank. It's just what I wanted. <laughs> But it's a good practice, right? Because it starts to open our eyes. And what the story is really about is a faith that is able to see some of God's blessing and then to rejoice exuberantly because in faith we know God is doing so much more. Turn to him with thanks. Praise him with a loud voice, people of God. <coughs> Now, I'm not saying the other nine weren't thankful for being healed by a miracle. But they kind of had a runaway response, didn't they? They go back to the priest and then they go home. And they forgot to send Jesus a note. Meanwhile, Jesus, he always has a soft spot for the outsider, doesn't he? This Samaritan, whom he somewhat offensively even calls this, this foreigner, this foreigner, though, who is the one that recognizes God's mercy has fallen even on him. And it reminds me of that sermon Jesus preached in his hometown. He almost got run off a cliff for it because he reminded the people there that they're not to have a sense of entitlement, but instead that God's mercy fell on Naaman the Syrian and uh, the Phoenician women of Zarephath. They didn't like that. Because they had a sense of entitlement. <coughs> and when we're, and that's a killer for gratitude, isn't it? Because we're just getting, you know, the good things we, we think we deserve. I want to go back to Pig just once more. Because after Pig says, thank you for being our readers, and you're delighted and surprised to be included as well into the story, Elephant declares this. We could not be us without you. Man, there's some good theology going on in this book. Isn't there? We could not be us without you. Jesus came to make us whole <coughs> to God and to one another. He's doing so much more. And the Samaritan leper, being an outsider, brought in. Got a glimpse of that. His joy and thanksgiving is uncontainable. It's kind of wild. I imagine him even doing somersaults and handsprings. It's time to celebrate. That kind of effusive joy and thanksgiving. And that brings us to another book, our call to community, 
book we're reading uh, essays from this fall, pairing them with our gospel news, The Life Jesus Wants for His People. And I read an essay entitled Celebrate. It's by Jean Veneer, and he established, um, I don't know if you're familiar with this, the ARC communities. He's 88 years old, he's still living, and um, they, these were founded in 1964 and now are an international uh, federation of communities spread over 35 countries for people with developmental disabilities and those who live and live with and serve in the system. And Henry Nowen, you might recognize that name, um, was invited to the art community in Toronto and um, also one in France and he lived the rest of his life there. Um, Jean writes that celebration is really about gratitude. And so let me read a little bit. I can hardly wait to read these to you every week. Two, sorry. I, there we go. <clears throat> a community that does not celebrate is in danger of becoming just a group of people that gets things done. It becomes an institution. It's not really a community. Where there is mutual trust and love, people want to open themselves to one another to celebrate. Together, this celebration is expressed in smiling and laughing and simple sharing and mutual concern and sensitivity in the way that people relax when they come together. It finds its fullest expression in shared meals. Words like companion and to accompany have their roots in the two Latin words cum pane, to share bread or food. Aristotle said that for two people to be friends, they must eat a sack full of salt together. In other words, they, they have to eat a lot of meals together. Celebration is first and foremost a song of gratitude, a thanksgiving. We are not alone. We are part of the same body, and there's no longer any rivalry or competition. We are together in love and unity. The greatest of humanity's riches does not consist in money or possessions, but in loving and united hearts. The strong supporting the weak, while the weak call forth the true humanity of the strong. And finally, the place where this is most represented on earth. The Eucharist. That's the Greek word for Holy Communion. And you know what that word means? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. There's a parishioner who, every time we have communion, she comes up, she's beaming. She's glowing. She's smiling. As she receives the wafer, dips it into the chalice. And every time she says, thank you, Jesus. To celebrate. People of God, praise God with a loud voice. Turn and thank him. And know this, right now, you are within saving distance. Think about whatever <clears throat> you brought today. Needing God's mercy to fall on. You are in saving distance right now. You're as close as you can get to God. Today you're hearing the sweet gospel news. Today you're welcomed to his supper where there are no barriers. <coughs> oh, so many outside in our world aren't there, but not here. This is the miracle of Christ. No one's marginalized. There's no lepers, no one with any sickness or disease or addictions or divorce or Samaritans or people, nobody, women, nobody's marginalized. Because Christ is coming right here on his journey to fulfill.
for us. Not only to heal our hurts, but to make us whole to God and one another. And think about what we do as we leave here. That's even one more healing, a final healing God is accomplishing in you, which is to be an agent of healing for others. We say, go in peace, serve the Lord, thanks be to God. A whole lot of thanks to God. Amen. Amen.